beautiful people, my name is Naila, your host for the Art of Living show. Our guest today is a former senator and CAS. He is also a distinguished figure in our government, a dedicated advocate for transparency and communication. Currently, he serves as government spokesperson. He is none other than Honorable Dr. Isaac Moura. He invites us to his palatial beautiful home to have a look around and to have a conversation. Let's discover, explore and engage. Come with me, let's explore this amazing home. Mozongo Eroiro. <laughs> hey, Ukumambo London. Karibu, karibu. Asante, how are you? Very fine. God, I love this gorgeous waterfall right behind me, my goodness. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah when you just sit here, you all the problems disappear. Yeah? No wonder you are so good at your work. Well, it just goes to show how articulate you are in explaining to us when there is trouble in the country. Now I see why. <laughs> Clearly, if this is where you come and put your well, feet up. I've been here for 10 years. Okay. I designed this place, by the way. Oh, you did? Yes, I did design it from scratch. Okay. I put it up in 2014. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I've been here for 10 years now. Unbelievable. This design is your inspiration? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I took time to do it because okay. I looked around, but I wanted something that is vintage. Okay. So you can see this feel. Yes. Uh, all these rocks, Yes. you'll be surprised that I almost literally collected each one of them. You're joking. Because they had to be well baked and from the ground. Okay. Yeah, and from where? Olepolos. What? In Mass Island. So they had to come uh, all of the way here. I remember the gentleman who brought it for me, all this, because we picked with him from the ground, literally. Okay. okay. And, um, you know, they are good shine. Yes. So it's called Simon Olenina. Uh, I wonder where he is now at this. But then, yeah, and then we, I wanted something like that that looks African, yes. you know, that, that oldish look. Yes. Of course, the water fountain here, yes. just to, to calm the nerves and all of that. I like it a lot. The columns also complement the design. It's a bit traditional, but it's still very modern. It has a modern touch and it feels amazing. It's, this now is supposed to be like the grand entry. Okay. So like now it arrests your presence yes. uh, to this uh, place. And um, now when I stand there, yes. you know, being a person who speaks to the people, yeah. you can easily address people from there. I you see. know, like that uh, uh, papacy, like yes. the Pope, where you yes. come out of the window and speak. Yes. Yes. So it, it is that kind of conceptualization. Uh -huh. Um, and, I, uh, and I see maybe in future you'll be the Kenyan president, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly you're practicing. I hope you have ambitions to be the president of Kenya. Um, God does things according to his will. Yeah. Yeah, according okay. to the will of God. So you, you uh, come here and Currently I am, I, am, I am the government spokesman. I speak for the government and I thank God for it. Yeah. Yes. This was for you, by the way. Oh, thank you. To just Asante say Sana. thank you for opening your space to us. Oh, wonderful. It's wonderful. We're bringing blessings to you. Karibu. Water it only once a week. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> My wife yes. will love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Thank you so much. Hello. But before I go in, mm. how big is the house? Okay, this house is six bedrooms. Okay. Yeah, and also it has very huge balconies, as you can see. Yes. It has a I, I like you have three balconies. Yeah. So each space has its own balcony. That's a very good design. I like it. Yeah, so we have this balcony. Yeah. Okay. Down here is supposed to be the garage. In fact, there's a garage. Okay. But you know, it's very interesting when you design a house, you think you can put cars inside. Yeah. But rarely do you do so. Thank you. This 
This is magnificent, Mahesh. Karibu, sir. You love blue? Yeah, yeah. Blue, yes, yeah. The couches, yes. The rest of the colors, gold. Yes. White. Okay. Yeah. These are these colors that you picked or your wife picked? We have common color of yellow. I think okay. you can also see a lot of yellow. Yes. So that now turns into gold. Yes. And also blue. Yes. And purple. Yeah. yeah. They are even our wedding colors. I like the fact that the gypsum as well has the yellow accent around and it looks beautiful. Talk to me about the lighting. I see lots of different chandeliers and light fixtures in your space. Yeah, so yes, yeah, so I got this one, all of them again from China okay. uh, in Guangzhou, okay. uh, you know, so that it looks very elegant. Even this one had to be specially made. Oh, Bigger, one you? meter full, yes. Okay. So that then it actually becomes the centerpiece okay. up here. Okay. So that then it actually illuminates around that. But also now the down lighters and the other side kind of lights. Yes. Yeah, so that then it, uh, it makes the place look cool, not too bright also. Yes, yes. Uh, but it looks very, very, very beautiful. It, it has that golden, you know, shine or kind yes, of light. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. And, and I like the stone wall on this side. Yes, yes, yes. It makes the space a bit more subtle because you have bright pop colors like the blue. Yes. But the stone wall and the wallpaper, perfect background for you to be able to play around with all these amazing portrait card pictures yeah, so you and accessories. The, you see that one? Mm -hmm. Compare now with the outside. Yes. So you can see that old theme. rugged theme. Eh? Mm -hmm. And also these bare stones here. Mm -hmm. So these are yellow stones, grey stones, mm -hmm. and of course now the, the wallpaper. So is that so that you feel like you are seeing stone as it is, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bare, bare as it is. So it's, it's a whole issue, yeah. and also it, it speaks also to this uh, Fire. you know, fireplace and the bricks. Of course, it's just cosmetic. Yeah. It doesn't get used for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's that feel, that feel right. of oldish kind of you know rugged, in vintage. Yes. Yeah. Question: yeah. What kind of upbringing did you have? My first fourteen years. I grew up there, I went to school in Thika, so I struggled between that and modernity because the school that I went to was a special school. Um, it was having all the nice utilities. So if you are using a pit latrine at home, you go to school, you're using a flash toilet. Excuse so, me, yeah, so you went yeah, yeah. to a posh school? It, it, Group of schools? Actually, when I look at it back, back in time, eh, yeah. it's a special school, okay. but it had more privileges yeah. than you would imagine. Okay. Yeah, so I think, uh, yeah, it looks special, you know what I mean, special. Yes. But comparing to the pri primary schools that I have seen around now as an adult, uh, we were way much ahead. And I'm not bragging. Yeah, it was, You're just saying. I mean, it gave us class. Yeah, I... We knew how to use you know, <laughs> these things, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So and you would have three meals a day and mm. very, uh, it was nice. Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, of course, we would get some niceties from those who would come and see around, yeah. And, and see around. Yeah. You went to a special school because of your albinism. Yes, yes. How was your childhood like? How different did you feel from the rest of the kids? And how has it affected the person that you are today? You know, I was thinking about this in, this morning, uh -huh. and I'm very proud of the fact that today we can comfortably talk about albinism. Yeah. But when I was growing up, it was a taboo subject. I didn't even know the name myself. Yes. I mean, I was born in 1982. Yeah. So it's a, two months I'll be 42. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, my father took off and said that, that they couldn't get a child like me in their family, a okay. child who looks like a pig. Wow. There's even some worse things that uh, my mother was told. Mm -hmm. It was really hard for her. Mm -hmm. But we thank God that I came out fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had to go to a special school, a boarding primary second, uh, special school mm -hmm. at the age of four and a half years. That's mm -hmm. torture. But mm -hmm. then I found myself there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when I found my national ethos. I found uh, you know, Kenyans from all over. Uh, the country and also learned Kiswahili without us. I don't even know how I did it. Mm -hmm. and, and I changed my life. I mean, mm -hmm. I can really credit that to be very transformational. And that's also where I started being a leader, mm -hmm. you know, uh, at, at that level because I became a class monitor mm -hmm. when I was still in kindergarten. What? So, yeah, so I think two, two things. Mm -hmm. I was cushioned from the fact that then I had more children yes. who looked like me yes. uh, because my mom had a first cousin mm -hmm. who was a teacher there. That's how I got the referral to go back there. Okay. And I'm very happy for that until of mine because then it changed my whole life, you know, yeah. One of my greatest achievements uh, that I've done for the last 18 years or so is to change the narrative of persons with albinism, for example, and also fighting for the cause of 
pass on to disabilities in general. And so you don't have to worry so much because you have people who look like you now, who are in high places, and so therefore even you can do much better than all of us. So kindly do not feel dejected. I know there will always be that moment where you're made to feel less of an individual. Keep on fighting and never give it up. It's a long and arduous struggle. And as Robert Frost said, the road knows taken. Keep on charting your own pathways and do not be confined uh, to the excellencies of others so that then it's only that which you can achieve. You heard that, guys. You're fortunate. You have a representative who's doing so well for himself. And he's an example of his achievement. He's opened his space to you so that he can inspire you to get to where he is and even go to higher levels than him. Muhesh, building in Kenya is not cheap. Investing in property is not cheap either. I'm sure this took you many years to build and to get what you have today. What are, this, what are some of the practical investment decisions did you make as you are growing up? I mean, you're gonna be 42, that's not very old. Just for young people to have something like this for themselves by the time they're 40. So I built this house when I was 31 going to 32. Those were, those were smart decisions to make then. At 30. Yeah, yeah, I made my first million at 26. Your first what? Million. Okay. Was it 26? Yeah. Um, 26. Yeah, 26, yes. Um, yeah, but I was actually, I got my first government appointment at 22 years old. Okay. It was quite something. Eh? I was still a campus student, a third year student. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I must have been one of the... Were you I mean, a student leader? Yes, I was a student leader. I was elected as a student leader. Uh, first year, first semester, I became a class secretary. Second semester, I was elected um, by all of the students at the university. We were only seven of us elected, so I was the seventh to be elected. 20, 2003 and 2004, I got my first government appointment. So, when I look back, I think, and I believe God was just leading me. So, you asked about this space. I put up this house, then at a cost of 30 million. Yeah, so I wanted to have my own home. So I put up this in eight months, exactly eight months, because I started 24th of January uh, 2014, and I opened this house uh, 25th. I opened this house on, I finished building on 25th of uh, September, and I opened the house on 27th of, uh, of September, and the chief guest was my political mentor, yeah. uh, Peter Nyangnyong. He's the one okay. who opened, yeah. he, uh, Peter Nyangnyong yeah, opened yeah, yeah, yeah. the house. Yeah, the governor of Kisumu because he's the one who really held my hand uh, to join national politics. Yeah. I was introduced to him by his daughter, uh, now famously known as Lupita Nyong'o, the Hollywood yeah. uh, you know, star, yeah. because we were doing a film together called In My Jeans, yeah. where I was acting as an aspiring politician. So dreams are valid. Dreams are valid yeah, yeah, indeed. Yeah. Lupita wanted to do you know, a, 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 a film uh, you know, on albinism, interestingly. And then I, I feature as an aspiring politician. But what's the, what is most important that she took me to the father yeah. at Mountain View 1 of, uh, 305, Mountain, Mountain View 305. He had a private office there. And the father liked me so much, he invited me to attend a high profile meeting the following day. It was on a Tuesday. Uh, it was on a Wednesday, sorry, I beg your pardon. And then on a Thursday morning, I, went, I got to Holiday Inn uh, in, 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 uh, in Westlands and in one room, I meet Raila Odinga, Uru Kenyatta, William Ruto, Salia Mudavadi, JJ Kamodo, Ruben Dolo, and whoever else was there, and the rest is history. And here you are, government spokesperson. Yes, I really am very grateful uh, for the opportunities that have uh, come and, my way. And, and you've also yeah. won lots of awards, because when I look right behind us, yes. is those awards, yeah. and those are mementos of places you've traveled to, yeah, right? let, let me explain to you. Uh -huh. okay. This is a, a safety thing. So, okay. but then this is um, this is my highest honor, I think. Okay. The chief of the order of the Burning Spear. Amazing! Congratulations! That's incredible. Yeah, it's now eight years old. Okay. Um, what an honor! So, this how did I get to win this? Uh huh. Tell us. Um, I ought to be awarded. I, I have done a lot of work on albinism and disability. So in 2016, I founded the Mr. and Ms. Albinism in Kenya. And uh, William Ruto came in there mm -hmm. as a chief guest. He was deputy president. Mm -hmm. And then 
because of all that I had been able to do, they said this gentleman deserves the national recognition. And uh, many of the times when we were in Parliament, that time of the National Assembly, yeah. people are given these awards based on their positions in the parliamentary hierarchy. But for me, it was purely I was nominated by the government itself, not even anybody else. And I was awarded um, uh, this in 2016, 12th of Congratulations. Yeah, so this is one of them. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm, so you see in the title CBS. So this is yes. a CBS now. Yes. Um, it's very coveted. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is a little bit dusty though. Um, this one I was given by the Plastic Surgery Society of Kenya because okay. of the, my, my contribution towards the fight against skin cancer. Okay. Uh, Professor Kainga and team, they actually approached me to, um, they say they are liking what I'm doing. Yeah, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Then this one is a Malaika Tribute Award in 2016 as well, okay. uh, because of being the activist of the year on disability rights. Okay. It is uh, run by Daddy Owen. Okay. So he says he really admires the work that I do. I was with him recently and uh, so I got that. Mm -hmm. And then we have... Um, this is a Lifetime Achievement Award okay. on Disability Rights as well nice. by ADARA, Annual Disability Rights. Okay. Now, this one um, is also a, an appreciation, yes. you know, trophy yeah. uh, for some young lady that I've mentored. She admired me from afar. Yes. We got to meet, and I am very proud to say that she's now an MCA in Nandi County. All right. Uh, you've inspired a lot, you've touched so many lives. Just looking at those accolades. Yes. So uh, this one is for my wife. Okay. Because she's also been awarded. Yes. Uh, this is Mzalendo uh, for parliamentary work. Okay. In 2015, I think. All right. Uh, Mzalendo Trust uh -huh. on special interest groups representation. We were competing with Johnson Sakaja. I beat him to it. Why did you beat him? Tell Be us. Because of the fact that, uh, for example, I, um, I pushed for some certain measures to be done. Such uh, a, what measures? Like now accessibility of Wayakiwe for those with disabilities. Okay. I presented a petition okay. uh, in that regard to parliament. But I was actually the person with the, uh, the highest, you know, mentions and push for legislative proposals, All right. uh, even in matters devolution. Okay. So that's how I was able to get that. Him, he was coming on the basis of youth. Okay. Uh, then this is Outstanding Young Alumni Award from Kenyatta University, again 2015. Uh, the young alumni, and I was awarded uh, when together with Mama Rachel Ruto, yes. she got a Lifetime Achievement Award mm -hmm. uh, from uh, Kenyatta University Alumni Association. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, this is beautiful. Mahesh, um, do you think you were born lucky, or it's your hard work, or is it the fact that you have worked for all these achievements? I think it's God who gives people this. Anyway, yeah. there, are, there are many of these awards here. We cannot complete all of this. Uh, I mean, there are many. Okay. Uh, all of this, there are all right. a lot of them. Um, yeah, but this is my collection. Yes. With KLM. Okay. So if you travel business, yeah. they give you this. All right. So there are houses in Netherlands. Okay. There's some pombe hapa. Okay. Uh, so I, I'm an, an alcoholic. So <laughs> I pour it. <laughs> but I've been collecting them. Oh. They so everyone nice. you see here yeah. represents some business class or so. Okay. Or oh, the places you've traveled to. No. Yeah. I may not remember. I've been to 45 countries of the world, right? By the way, yeah. speaking of which, how many languages do you speak? French, English, Kiswahili, Kikuyu, some bit of Kamba, Japanese, and Tokpithin. Do you know the phone that I'm having right now, the S Galaxy S24, can translate 13 yeah. languages? 13? Yes. Wow, that's beautiful. Can it right. speak talk pissing? Talk pissing is a pidgin language. It's a pidgin. No, in, I don't think that's that. In, right. in, in Papua New Guinea, <laughs> I used to work there in 2008. So this, all of this, they now represent the, the, a, a good number of times that I've traveled, but okay. not every, not every. But you said you've been to how many countries? 45. And this is what you collect when yeah, you travel? Yeah, there was a time I would travel. Like in 2018, I was in 20 countries in one year. 20. In 2019, I was in 16 countries in one year. Some of them are repeat. Yeah. But yes, I have also lived in the UK, I've lived in South Africa, I've lived in uh, Papua New Guinea, so I've lived in four countries. Is, is this also, talking about your space, yes. did you get inspiration from the places that you've traveled and stayed? Uh, it's subconscious. Sealing the, 
the windows, the huge windows. They're like these windows. The inspiration is like when you're in a hotel room kind of thing, huh? that you can open. So I wanted them to be like the way you pull, like, like that gazebo, those doors, they're casement. Yeah. Uh, but then, of course, because of security yeah. issues, eh? then you can't just have those ones. But that's what, that was my idea. In fact, I'd left it all like this, but then I was advised by whoever that I should put these kind of things. I really they don't like these ones, because there are too many. I wish it was, there was more light, you get? Yes. Yeah, yeah, because then, but you see now security, sometimes we cage ourselves, we put these metallic things that then grids and water view. But it would be good that you have more and more light. But then, of course, there's this canopy, of the, of the balcony that then of course you require. Yes. Yeah. The windows are beautiful design. That one I, I, cre I credit to my wife. <laughs> you what? You credit your wife? Yes, yeah, this white thing kind of thing is, is, her, yeah. is her idea, yes. Uh, I, actually, I, previously it was golden. Okay. Uh, a bit darkish, but then of course lighting. Yeah. But my whole idea was to have it more open. Yes. Yeah. Those two paintings there, how important are they to you? Uh, well, they remind me of, uh, okay, the most important one is this one. Okay. This one, I think, is a, it was a gift. Okay. There are many places that you go and then somebody thinks, uh, and then they say, okay, you are like an elephant, so you can, you're strong, yes. or like that rhino there. Yes. You, you can charge. In fact, I was given that by members of parliament, uh, uh, you know, during our wedding. Yes. But then this one is our anniversary, okay. uh, uh, sorry, our honeymoon. Yes. in the island of Bali in uh, Indonesia. Wow. So they did that for us, I think. Who did that uh, for you? It's beautiful, I love it. Yeah, so it, I think they did it there, is it? I think, yeah. So it reminds us of our honeymoon. honeymoon. Yeah. Lovely, our honeymoon. lovely. someone will love is in heaven and there's a little bit of heaven in our home that is so special Mheshmiwa. yes it is um those are our two children we got yeah. got triplets yes. so there's Jiro there uh here that's Jiro mm -hmm. and his two siblings uh, Jerry and Maura Jr yes. but then the two died <coughs> They died, um, Jerry, after two days of birth, they came premature, and then the other, the other little man died after 76 days. So we were in hospital for almost three months. Okay. Yeah. That must have been a really difficult. It was very difficult. It's 2017, imagine, I was uh, running to be member of parliament for Roiro. I had shifted political parties from ODM to Jubilee, and that came with, with its own challenges. It was a very nasty problem. We were in hospital. We had a huge medical bill of about 11.2 million. Wow. I, and then at some point, I remember on uh, 28th of January 2017, all of us were in hospital. My wife with her three kids and, um, and, 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 and myself, I also had to do some surgery. So it, it was very tough. It was really tough. But now that... Uh, you know, corner reminds us of the two that are in heaven. Yeah. yeah. How did you overcome the grief? It took some time. It really took some time. It affected my wife. She went into the depression, and so, yeah, it was tough, really. And for me, it took a long. You know, men men they don't express the same way, yeah. but it affected me a lot, um, a lot, really. And I knew at that point in time, if I had stayed. I would even have had a nervous breakdown. So I became very busy because I, I joined the presidential campaign team. Mm -hmm. So I would come from campaigns and go see my family at hospital. But you, I also kept it under wraps because then I didn't have to talk a lot about it. But it was difficult. Yeah, and here we are. But they are in heaven, you know? Yeah. At least they are in heaven. Yeah. How yes. did you meet your wife? I'm curious. Oh, She's yeah. so gorgeous. Through a mutual friend. Okay. Uh, this gentleman called Washington Sati. Uh -huh. He knows himself. So Washington is now the vice chair of the Commission for Administrative Justice. Uh -huh. And they were friends with my wife in campus because they were in the same um, university of Nairobi. And uh, my wife went to a girl's school that had also um, a school for the deaf uh, as a sister school. So when she went to the university, 
she had she could associate easily with the deaf people because Washington is deaf. And then Washington went bragging that, oh, you think I, I know people because I was in the newspaper. I think the people daily or something like that. Anyway, the rest is history. Uh, we connected and uh, uh, in 2012 and then um, we dated for about three months and I told her to go away, you are too young, I think I will need to get married. And then one and a half years later we came back together. We, we remained friends though. Okay. And uh, <laughs> I knew that this is going to be my wife. So I would tell him, I would tell her, you, you are mine. No matter where you go, you're mine. Anyway. And why? I just knew. I just knew. I, mean, I just knew she was, she was the one. I can't explain it. I knew she was. And um, yeah, so she, she, we, we got back in 2014. Less than a year we were married. And so this is our ninth year. Okay. Yeah. We'll be nine years in, uh, in June okay. of this year, June 27th. Yeah. Interesting. You being a public figure and seeing your wedding mm -hmm. was also part of, you, you went to State House <laughs> on the wedding day. <laughs> Yeah. And the president was gave you guys a tour. I mean, she's such a lucky bride. <laughs> I mean, really, this. Talk to me about these pictures. And uh, we saw this; it was <laughs> trending. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, who's this lucky girl yeah. got married to Isaac? And yeah. um, they've taken pictures with the president. Talk to us about that. I'm curious. Yeah, it was. It is a, the one and only photo shoot. Uh, that has ever taken place at the State House. And you're not bragging? Yeah, you're yeah. Just saying. it has never happened. I mean, <laughs> I was in a, uh, the Parliamentary Bunga Fellowship and we had the tradition of going to pray at least once every year with the President. It didn't happen many years, but this, this year in 2015 mm -hmm. that I went to, we went to pray with the President. Mm -hmm. And I asked my friend, uh, then Chairman, Captain Wambogo MP for Madhira, yeah. that can I take this opportunity to invite the President to my wedding? I did so. I did so. I went and took the car to him. Uh -huh. And uh, of course, we, I mean, you just hope, uh, because I invited many people, including Raya Laudinga. We were having our photo shoot at Windsor. And um, there we were. And uh, then everybody was told to clear. I saw some Mercedes Benz. We were told to get in. And we started moving at a very fast speed. So nice. Uh-huh. You were limousines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And they were clearing and they were going against traffic and we went and then I asked Jomo, are we going to state house? Say yes, the president is waiting for you. Ah. Because he had said that the president wants to see you at the earliest. So for me I thought it's after for the for the honeymoon. Mm -hmm. Then we went, the gates were open and we got in there then photographs and it, it was a movie. I, you know my wife couldn't believe because she almost wanted to, wanted to run ahead like <laughs> then the president was there and yeah and we had a good time that was the best gift ever yes for your uh, wedding and then we finished listen yes. to this uh -huh. we finished this yeah got in and now we drive back to 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 Windsor because my bridal party was there as we go I'm told Raila Odinga is waiting for you here so I arrived there and then Mr Odinga is there so he also takes photo shoots with us but then we proceed to the main wedding and he stays with us for about four hours and it was a wonderful it was a 2500 capacity wedding uh, many people, dignitaries, uh, even members of parliament from Burundi, from Tanzania were there, judges, uh, PSS, uh, members of parliament, and people of all walks of life. It was huge. Headline story, photo page. Hey. In the standard, by the way, your yeah. newspaper, yeah. their standard. Yes. There, three of us, like cover story. Now, your political career, you've managed to work with two regimes and you work seamlessly with them. What is it? Is it the fault? So Kibaki, uh -huh. uh, Uhuru, mm -hmm. and uh, so we see you and, there. And, and, and Brutus. So those are those are three. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. one of the pictures there, you're the senator being sworn in as a senator. The other, you're being sworn in as the CAS. Yes. What is it about you, <laughs> Honorable? So yes, I've been Dr. Uh, Isaac. Mora. I have been, I've been in the Kibaki, Kibaki one. Kibaki one, I was a board member of a state corporation. At the argument of 22, 04, 07. Kibaki two, I was an advisor in the office of the Prime Minister, the Grand Coalition. Uhuru one, I was a member of parliament, 
the National Assembly, nominated by ODM. Uhuru II, I was a nominated senator in the Senate. Ruto I, I have been CAS, but then you know what happened in CAS. And then I was the first to be appointed out of the list of the 50 mm -hmm. to be the government spokesman. Mm -hmm. And I was their chairman. I was their chair. So I was appointed. As, as today's government mm. spokesperson. Mm. And all of this, by the way, is good I explained. Yeah. It was a first. A first when, of yes, each. When I, each. Because when I, was, um, when I was a board member, I was the first youngest and also the first with albinism to sit in that board. Mm -hmm. It was an inaugural board. Uh, when I was an advisor, of course, I was the first. When I became member of parliament, I was the first. I was in become senator, I was the first. Here is the first. And spokesman, the first. So this is my five, fifth public position. And I'm the fifth government spokesman. Appointed by the fifth president. Do you want to tell me that's by coincidence? No. And I started my work on 5th of October. Because I was appointed on 4th of October at night. Unbelievable. Uh, with Ezekiel Matrogo to issue the first press statement. So, so I think it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really, I mean, it's only God. Because when I look back at my life, I was being prepared to be government spokesman. Whoever gave me that job knew me so well more than I do, because I can see I was being prepared. Because when I was a board member in 04, I was also the chair of public relations of our office. When I got my first job, real job, as a programs officer, I was also doubling as a PR officer. Uh, again, when I was uh, doing all these other things, I was doing international NGOs and whatever, I was even an editor, advocacy manager, whatever you call it. And all of those, so you can see a very clear pathway. Pathway. And even going to Kenya Institute of Management to do diploma in PR. So you can see, and communications. And then in 2009, I started the communications department of the National Council for Persons with Disabilities from scratch. You in were fact, prepared, yeah. In fact, the head of LSK Comcoms, a close study of Kenya, is, was my, my intern. Was my intern from day start. So I finished parliament, appointed CAS, didn't, didn't work out, and then I'm given to be the mouthpiece and face of government. I mean, really, to be honest, Naila, I only credit God because when he, when he speaks in the book of Psalms 118 verses 105, he's, he's actually a light unto our feet. I mean, he guides our footsteps. Uh, and so therefore, for me, I'm extremely humbled yeah. uh, because he knows us more than we ever do. I have tried myself yeah. to be member of parliament for Ruiru twice yeah. uh, and successfully. But he has appointed you for all these positions, five positions, yes. and you've been the first. Yes. And without lobbying, for example, I, I mean, I didn't lobby to be government spokesman. I can tell you for sure. I didn't. God, you're amazing. Yeah. It's so wonderful to see what God can do in your life. He actually appoints leaders. Yes, and disappoints them. And disappoints them. Yes. Wonderful. Now, this is my grandfather. Okay. These are 1951 portraits. 19 what? 51. What were their names? So, Cyrus Maura Maigua, okay. um, Isaac Ma Maigua Maura. Okay. Cyrus Maura Maigua yeah. and my Shoshu. Okay. Uh, Mary, Mary Wadiku. Are you the only child in your family? No, I'm not. Okay. I have a brother called Henry. My mother in love, myself, my wife, and my mom. The during, most important women. Yes, because both of us are from single parent household, single mother. Okay. Uh, so, this was when I. In Kikui, we have a ceremony called Itara. Mm -hmm. So it was at our home there. I wanted to talk about your personal style. Yes. And I mean, let's, it has yellow. Mm. Clearly, you mm. love yellow. Mm. You wear African, a lot of African. I like the fact that you always have the little hat and it looks very stylish. I want to find out why did you, why do you always pick the African style? What is the inspiration for your style? Uh, no, this As I take a picture to find out where you got this outfit from. Okay. Uh -huh. This is very interesting. Uh -huh. I used to wear them, but not as often. Okay. And then when I went to Parliament, uh, Minika Linturi, now Minister for Agriculture, stood in his place there yes. and asked the speaker that he has just seen a cowboy walking into Parliament because I had a huge uh, sombrero, Godfather. Uh, and uh, yeah. And then Ababu Namwamba now also his minister came to me and said, you must stand and defend the, your people because that was an insult. Why would he call you a cowboy? It became a huge story, by the way. But anyway, we talked with one, our Alice Wahomi, again another minister. He said, Maura, wear these small ones. They'll make you look better. So I started wearing them more frequently. It's become my insignia. Yeah. 
yeah. my signature and also uh, it's been copied. By the way, let me tell you, uh, that is where Abdid Mas Barasa got the idea, but mm -hmm. made his uh, 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 red, uh, this gentleman called uh, Moroto, mm -hmm. and also uh, Kaduri Murungi. Okay. There are quite a number of people who picked up, and also the member of parliament for Ebuye. All of them uh, and others. So do, you it's, know, it's do you know what this is called? This one? Yes. Do you know what the Google is saying? The what? S, my S Samsung. What is it saying? S24 is Galaxy is saying. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's calling it Ankara Dashikisen. Yes, that's wonderful. This is from um, this is from uh, Abidjan. Okay, it's so it's right? called a Dashikisen. Yeah. Ankara Dashikisen. So next time, yes. you remember to tell people this is just you know where did you get Dashikisen. this from? Yes. Dashikisen. Yes. And this one is from Nigeria. Okay. So, yeah. So I love this because right. it asserts my Africanness and yes. it's easy to wear. Yeah. Uh, you know, part of it is also psychological in a way because okay. uh, when you are born black with a white skin, yeah, yeah, then people can speak Kikuyu and they can, you cannot understand. You know, there is a lot of ignorance. Eh? Yes. It has gone down now because okay. I'm more often people can see me. But when I was growing up, yeah. people would even Sengenya me in Kikuyu there. Then when I talk, they say, see where to go to Nagia Kukusu, but of course it was me. So, so for me, this is mm -hmm. my way of asserting myself okay. uh, and to show, and I love African as I'm a, a true African and it's also easy to wear. Yes. And also, um, I would, if not this, you, you would uh, see me in a suit with a bow tie and a massage and, uh, you know, the handkerchief on the side and all of that. Yes, smartly dressed. I love being smart. Uh -huh. It's something that I picked when I was young because my mother, mm -hmm. Grace Jerry always want, wanted my brother and I to be very well dressed. Okay. So I love it and everybody has their styles. I mean like even when I was campaigning for Roiro, yeah. you know my opponents would say, <laughs> but here you are looking amazing. Yes, yes. about this piece this piece is very interesting it has got very good memories okay when my wife was expecting our triplets used to spend a lot of time here okay that's the most memorable thing that i remember that i associate this room with All right. but it's just a place to be quiet away from the noise and to watch your, your movie if you really want to do so and just to have conversations okay yeah, yeah. and also it has acted at some, at some point as a studio yes uh because of that wallpaper yeah so my wife and uh, a friend of ours, uh, uh, they were trying to do some <laughs> YouTube, uh, okay. YouTube production. Sometimes, you know, when you have such spaces, they are more useful at certain seasons of life. True. And then in other seasons, maybe not as much. Yeah. Depending on also on the different. But it's also now it's it's very well catered for. It has also a kitchen, a okay. kitchenette there. All right. So you can make your coffee and just sit here and watch TV and without any disturbance. I see lots of open spaces. Mm -hmm. I like how you've designed your home. Yes. Your kitchen also, I found that it's very spacious. It, it's very open. By the way, are you domesticated? Do you cook? No, ah! I don't. And I, I don't. And I am not How can you deny like that and I'm front denying of a camera? It strongly. <laughs> I don't. I'm an African male. Without any apology. Really? I am not going to cook. My Now goodness. that all. In fact, the last time I cooked was when I was single. <laughs> so I don't cook. <laughs> What? Yes, I don't cook. I have done shows where I'm cooking, but uh, I don't cook. Eish. It doesn't make me any less of a man. I am a male African who is proud of his heritage. <laughs> okay. uh, but then we are very good friends with Jiro. Very, 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 very good friends. Okay. And I discovered the love of a father mm -hmm. through raising my own son because I never experienced a single of such because I, no, I don't, I've never met my father myself. And it leaves some very serious void mm -hmm. uh, in you. Mm -hmm. And this idea of people trying to imagine that you don't need to know your father is not, it's wrong, it's really wrong. Mm -hmm. And men out there who just hire children and go away, you are destroying a whole generation of people. Mm -hmm. Because there is some incompleteness that mm -hmm. comes with it. And I speak this very volubly. Mm -hmm. That is why we are having masculinity deficit. So here I am, mm -hmm. I've got to be a good husband at the same time to be a father mm -hmm. to a boy. Mm -hmm. You get it, eh? mm -hmm. but we are recreating that malehood and man because you can also look around. I mean, you know what it is to be a man. Yeah. Uh, some of it is imagined, but it's also good because also you also can go for courses like a very good one I have done, which is called Man Enough. Okay. 
but those, that void of, of, of fatherhood is very, very strong. Have you looked for your dad? Uh, yes, I have done so, but uh, I no longer do because I realized that even when I pesk, I, I, I keep on asking my mother about that question. I'm trying to fight the victim. Okay. Yeah, you understand? Like, she was also victimized. She was called all those kind of names and she had to just be strong for me. And she really has done a very good job in taking care of me. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Let's, um, what has your son taught you? The beauty of a father's love. I like that. It's amazing. Can I tell you? Mm. What I didn't experience now, I'm experiencing it. It's genuine. He, for example, the other day he was telling me, uh, I want you to be taking me to school on Mondays because when I, when, when mommy takes me, I'm late for scout. So, Moishmi, how do you balance being a father, um, being our husband, being the government spokesperson, and where do you get your serenity? I wake up many times every morning at 3 a.m. to pray. Okay. It's a beautiful time to pray. Okay. Between 3 to 5 a.m. it's wonderful. Mm. And it has really strengthened my relationship with God, and I must tell many Kenyans to know that uh, we pray. So that, and also exercising. Very important because this work is very arduous. Sometimes I, I, I will be even up to the office up to, there was a time I actually left at about 1 a.m. By the way, being in the executive, if anybody was to tell you, all of my colleagues who are within uh, parliament now that are ministers or PSS, they'll tell you, being in parliament is a joke. When you're in the executive, it's extremely, extremely demanding. Yeah. Now you're the government spokesperson. Yes. Tuambie too, as I'm wrapping up this mm. interview, mm. I can be here all day because your mm. story is amazing. Mm. We've enjoyed your inspiration stories, mm. your family life. You mm. truly have touched some mm. of us in a big way because we want to be like you. Uh, to be to my itakuwa easier. You know, the, we've been in one sentence, look into the camera and tell out of living viewers, <coughs> As a government spokesperson, when we come a government spokesperson to Ambie Maisha, the money is coming back, the dollar is coming down. The government is speaking, and I want to tell you without a doubt that we are headed for greater things. Already, you can see the Kenya shilling has gained by 20 bob. You can see our euro bond has been oversubscribed, that means we are able to manage our public debt. The cost of unga has reduced to 114 shillings. Uh, there is one brand called dollar that is going for that. If you look at even fuel prices have also reduced. We've also seen uh, even uh, the issue of electricity. There's some minimal reduction. Things can only get better. We can only have been worse because of the post-COVID shocks, the post-election shocks and over borrowing. But now we are trying to stabilize by having clear austerity measures and having new revenue streams and the economy is actually rising from the bottom up. Be strong. We are going to make it. And by 2027, you will see the difference that is going to happen. In 10 years time, we can only be second to South Africa. Thank you. That was incredible. Muheshimiwa Mudogo Arroyo has promised us by 2027, our economy will be second to South Africa. Plus, by the way, go check whether the fly, maize fly is 114. What an inspirational story. Thank you, Muheshimiwa, for having us. Um, his home is magnificent. His story is inspiring. I've enjoyed myself and he's so clever and stylish. Thank you for watching. Keep it here every Thursday at 8 p.m. I've been your host, Nyla, and don't forget to follow the government spokesperson. What's your handle again? Spokesperson GOK. Spokesperson GOK. At Maura Isaac One. Follow the at only one. the only one. That was so cool, so amazing, so inspiring. You can do this. Thank you for watching. I've been your host, Nyla.